Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and it is Sunday, the 25th of July in the year 2021. And I cannot believe that we are in the last week of July. I can't believe it. I just, it boggles my mind. <laughs> Does it boggle your mind? Because it sure boggles mine. Um, time is just going so fast. And next Sunday, when we speak again, it will be August 1st. So there you go. Um, okay, I'm broadcasting from lovely Oscazu, Costa Rica, where I'm sitting on my patio. And it's dark. And the crickets are chirping and the frogs are chirping. And there's a couple of bats flying around here. And they're coming to my hummingbird feeder as I speak. And they're very friendly and nice, so we're not afraid of them. They, they're very nice. If we don't have bats, we don't have mangoes. So remember that the next time you go, oh, a bat. If you like mangoes, we need bats. Okay, on to astrology. Um, the nature moment is over. On to astrology. Now, now we're looking at the nature of the sky. Okay, so an interesting week ahead where we have three planets changing signs. Okay, so that's uh, a big deal. And probably the biggest deal of all of them is Jupiter going back into Aquarius. And that is going to be on Wednesday in the evening, Eastern time and my time. And so Jupiter has been in Aquarius since last December. And then Jupiter took a little break from Aquarius, whizzed through Aquarius, whizzed through Aquarius. And actually went into Pisces for a short amount of time. Now, when Jupiter went into Pisces, it did not go very far. And it went retrograde, you know, in not so long ago. And it went back through Pisces. So it only went up to two degrees of Pisces. And then it turned around at two degrees of Pisces. And it went back. And so it only really covered those first two degrees of Pisces. So it was a teaser, you know, because Jupiter will really go into Pisces uh, about December 28th or 29th this year and then be in Pisces next year. And it won't even stay in Pisces very long next year. It's going to sort of be half in Pisces and then half in Aries. But what happened is that Jupiter took its time in Pisces, spent a couple of months there, and then decided, okay, it's time to go back into Aquarius. And so its journey through Aquarius is not finished, and its um, impact on Aquarius is not finished. And so the other night we had a full moon, that was Friday night, and it was very close to the degree where Jupiter and Saturn met in December on December 21st. And I did an Instagram about it. I wrote a blog about it. I've been talking about it all week. I talked about it last week on the podcast. And this is important because we're not finished with Jupiter and Saturn and they are a turning point. So anything that's that big of a conjunction once every 20 years makes an impact on us that is far-reaching and deep. And we're not expecting that it's just, oh yeah, Jupiter, Saturn, bye. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. Not much happened that week. Blah, blah, blah. That's something that, first of all, when you had the aspect happen, things were going on. So maybe you had a busy week, but it was, you know, whatever. Maybe, maybe nothing big happened that week. Maybe it was business as usual. Maybe it was just busy or, or maybe it wasn't busy. Anyway, what it was giving you though was you know Aquarius is not it's not your everyday sign meaning and I'm not insulting any signs but it's not like Taurus that's dealing with you know money in the bank and food on the table and you know things that are very earthbound Aquarius is dealing with high-minded, high-consciousness, collective unconscious energies. It's the group. It's the movement. It's the planetary shift in consciousness. And when we see this with Jupiter and Saturn, you know, then we say, okay, these planets are signaling a major shift in our life on Earth. 
And they were signaling. And, you know, to be honest, I thought, okay, so, you know, it's, we're, no, it's not Age of Aquarius because we still have um, uh, that to go through. And that's, that's probably a couple hundred years away. But, but this was the first time in 200 years Jupiter and Saturn conjuncted Aquarius. And so now Jupiter is going back into Aquarius. And it's going to finish its journey um, for the rest of the year. And like I said, that's on Wednesday. And so what did we learn with Jupiter and Aquarius for the first portion of this year and last December? And then with this full moon the other night, there's, there's a lot happening when we have, you know, a planet like Jupiter being so expansive and so um, profoundly generous and deeply interested in learning and, and expanding and on knowledge and when it goes into Aquarius which is uh, also about knowledge in a different sense because Aquarius's keywords are I know um, <laughs> and that comes in a variety of ways <laughs> um, you know when Jupiter goes back into Aquarius you know this is this is a very very profound expansion of knowledge. And so even though Saturn is there, and even though Saturn is, you know, oh, the, the practicalities, the responsibilities, the hierarchy, the patriarchy, the, you know, you know, you better get the job done kind of thing. And Saturn's really entangled with Uranus a lot these days. And so Jupiter's coming back into Aquarius to sort of hopefully lighten things up a bit and continue the journey of expansive knowledge and continue the journey of freedom and independence and understanding um, where consciousness is, is expanding and bringing us a greater, deeper experience of life on Earth. And... I hear a lot, a lot, and this is not on, you know, it's on YouTube, but I'm not watching it on YouTube. I'm hearing a lot from people in my life, healers and other, other astrologers about this, you know, expansion where we're leaving, you know, the 3D world behind over a course of time and we're transitioning to a 5D world. And that sounds like, huh, what? Like, how could that possibly be happening? And you know, I thought this was a lot of whatever, you know, and one of these other new age kind of ideas that could or could not be possible. But I'm feeling very different things lately. I'm feeling very different things. And I feel intuitively that we are expanding and we are moving into a direction of something else. Um, not that it's going to be a golden age, but I, we are moving to a different level of consciousness. And this year is a big transition because, you know, when you get Saturn and Uranus squaring each other all year, you are dealing with, you know, the restriction, limitation uh, portion of life versus the breakthrough and raise consciousness portion of life. And each of us has this going on in our lives. And there's, you know, there's a certain amount of stress associated with that. My wish is that when Jupiter comes back into Aquarius and stays there for these next months for the, till the rest of the year, it really helps us along with this consciousness expanding experience. And it makes the, the journey of Saturn and Uranus a little lighter. It's not going to join Saturn again. It's only going to retrograde back to 23 degrees. And in October, it will, or 22 actually, I think, um, of Aquarius and it will in October turn around and go forward. So it's going to be retrograde till the beginning of October and then it will go forward as a number of other planets will at that time, as I've mentioned before. And Jupiter is, you know, Jupiter's the big guy. He's, he's your friend. He's a protector. He's, you know, the protection against, you know, the, the darker qualities of life. And he is also a, opening of doors and opportunities and expansiveness and um and he can also make your waistband expand as well so you got to be careful 
<laughs> you can think, oh, my mind is going to expand, and your waistband expands instead. So, you know, Jupiter causes us often to overindulge. Ooh, that chocolate cake. I have to go back and have more. You know, I want two pieces of chocolate cake. Just watch the chocolate cake. <laughs> um, so that's that's one of the experiences we're going to be having this week. And the return of Jupiter to Aquarius is the return of the awareness of consciousness-raising experiences. Not that Jupiter in Pisces doesn't do that. Um, I think that of that as more spiritual, as more protection, as more sensitive because it's a water sign. Jupiter is a little more, in Aquarius, is more intellectual because that's the nature of Aquarius. It's an air sign. And so when we have that experience of Jupiter going back into Aquarius, um, we start to um, think in more intellectual and maybe scientific terms. Um, you know, Jupiter and Pisces expanded our belief systems. Now we're... we're kind of coming back into the place of, of, you know, learning and, and collective education. So, okay. Um, and you know, so we had a full moon the other day and last week I told you that we were having a second full moon and that's not going to be for another month, you know, um, but the moon will be full with Jupiter. So Jupiter will be at the end of Aquarius still, it's not going to move very far. And when Jupiter um, and the moon conjunct, the moon will be full um, shortly thereafter, a few hours after. So that's a, a that next full moon in Aquarius, which is rare, you know, two full moons, um, that's going to be with Jupiter. So I think that's pretty exciting. So we're going to rev up for that. Um, in the meantime, what else is changing signs? Our friend Mercury is going into Leo. Yes, indeed. So Mercury is going into Leo. Now, Venus just left Leo and went into Virgo. And Mercury is going into Leo and the sun is in Leo. So it'll be Mercury and the sun in Leo and Mars is in Leo right now. Um, so there will be, for a few days anyway, three planets in Leo. And Mercury is fun in Leo. Mercury tells jokes. Mercury is cheerful. Mercury is open and fiery and, and creative. So if you've got creative things that you put on the back burner, bring them to the front burner. Get the creativity moving because that's what Mercury does in Leo. It's, it's creative. And, you know, you might want to take more time to play with your kids. Um, you may be someone who writes children's books and you get a new idea for a children's book. Um, Leo is about children as well. Leo is about the arts. So, you know, Mercury going into Leo, um, it won't stay there forever. <laughs> It'll zip through Leo and then go into Virgo next month. But um, it's going to really give us some um, creative time. So have fun. Leo is a fun sign. We should be thinking about fun. We should be planning fun. We should be diving into fun. Fun should be part of our schedule. So schedule some fun especially now I know it's like Monday, Monday, we're going to schedule fun, you know, because, well, actually it's going to be Tuesday that, that it goes into Leo. So it's like, mm, you know, the, it, these early days in the week are not fun days. They're the days that we think about going to work and, and handling work. It's like, so, you know, before you got, you got Tuesday and Wednesday, <laughs> to have three planets in Leo because then on Thursday Mars goes into Virgo okay so Mars the fire planet gets out of the fire sign and goes into practical Virgo and you know it's like it's like getting your job done um Virgo's very loyal though so you know Mars in Virgo is uh, maybe a loyal partner or loyal love life or something. It's not as jazzy as in Leo, you know. So, um, and so, so we've got Mercury going into Leo. We've got Jupiter going into Aquarius. We've got Mars going into Virgo. And these happen Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in that order. And of course the moon will be busy changing signs, but honestly, you know, Jupiter's the big one. So Mars in Virgo is not something that 
um, is bad at all. It's, you know, Mars doesn't mind being in Virgo. Mars gets a lot accomplished in Virgo. And so, you know, the fun days, Tuesday, Wednesday, think about, think about like where you can schedule in the fun and the sun and Mercury will still be in Leo. Um, so, you know, pick up the phone, call a fun friend, have a fun conversation, make jokes, have good humor, those kinds of things. Mars will say, great, all that creativity, all those thoughts and ideas that our friend Mercury has in Leo will feed Mars to get something accomplished in Virgo. So it's like, great, I can like make something concrete. But that will be, again, another planet in Earth. <laughs> So, you know, we like having this fire energy because remember, before things started going into Leo, there was no fire in the sky. So, you know, we have, um, we'll have Jupiter go back into Aquarius, that'll be air, um, and that'll be one less thing in water. We will have Mercury leaving Pisces, um, not Pisces, Cancer leaving cancer, going into Leo, that's one less thing in water. So we're going to get at, there was a lot of water. Remember last week, there was so much water. There were five planets in water. That's all going to shift this week. And I mean, the moon is going to go into Pisces later this evening and conjunct Jupiter tonight. So, hey, that's good. That's really nice. Enjoy that. Cozy up with your favorite friend and have a nice moon Jupiter experience this will be the last time the moon and jupiter conjunct in pisces before the end of the year so this is healing this is soothing maybe you want to go take a hot bath do something um, beautiful for yourself um something pleasing something spiritual maybe you want to do a little meditation with a candle that could be a very lovely experience so this is the last time the moon and jupiter will conjunct in pisces before the um Jupiter goes back into Pisces again, and I have to look way ahead to find out where Jupiter's going to be, or the moon is going to be, you know, around New Year's or so. Um, meantime, we will have, uh, you know, Mars still in, so for, for two days, we'll have three planets in Leo, and then Mars will leave, and then we'll be back to two planets in Leo again. And then we'll have, <laughs> there's so much Earth. There's so much Earth. Uh, there will be planets in Earth. And there will be, uh, by the end of the week, four planets in Earth. Because Pluto's not going anywhere. It's still in Capricorn. And Uranus is still in, in Taurus. That's not going anywhere. So Venus and Mars will then both be in Earth. And, you know, to answer the question that people have been asking me, um, Venus and Mars are pretty far apart at this point, And Venus will be zipping along and won't really be close to Mars anymore. You know, um, they're somewhat conjunct, but they're really separating. So that all that excitement and energy we had two weeks ago is, is pretty much finishing up. Um, so what do we do with Mercury and Leo? We have creative ideas. We play with children. We get, we get childlike in our thoughts and ideas. And I don't mean whiny. I mean, children have an amazing imagination. They make up games. They make up play playtime games. They pretend they're, you know, doing something. They play pretend. And when they play pretend, you know, they're being creative and imaginative. That's what Mercury, that's the gift of Mercury in Leo. And enjoy it because Mercury's very fast. Mercury won't stay in Leo for very long. So with Mercury and the sun in Leo, we're being given the gift of, you know, imagination and childlike wonder. And that's a beautiful gift. Okay, and if you forgot what it was like to be a kid or if you didn't have much of a childhood, um, this is a great opportunity to take to um, understand that and be fun, be creative, be a little zany, you know, and um, next Sunday when we meet, you know, things are going to start getting interesting as the sun and Mercury will conjunct in Leo. But then, you know, things, uh, anything going through a fixed sign right now is, has to get entangled with Saturn and Uranus. And so next Sunday, it's first Saturn, and then later in the week, it, and we'll talk about this next week on the podcast, when the Sun and Mercury 
get wrapped up with Saturn and Uranus. So that's, so enjoy this week because we don't have any Saturn Uranus things happening really, except for the moon, which slips through there every week, but enjoy this week because we're going to have to contend with the sun and Mercury hitting Saturn and Uranus in the coming week afterwards. So go have fun. Um, Mercury will, like I said, inspire us to get busy with Mars, which will go into Virgo, um, in the afternoon on Thursday and give us some ideas about what we need to connect with, um, relative to, you know, what, what accomplishments can we make creative accomplishments, right? You know, we can just be creative and fun. Like you could bake cakes and cookies and, and just have your imagination wander. But if you want to glean something from this and take it on the road with you well then that's a great mars is a great thing in virgo to to actually really uh, manifest something because it's in earth um okay and so when um jupiter now there's this little transition that happens between wednesday and thursday because as mars is wrapping up its journey in leo right before it goes into Virgo, in the morning of Thursday, okay, Mars will oppose Jupiter. So Jupiter is like backing up into Aquarius. Mars is going forward into Virgo, but they're going to meet, whereas, whereas, you know, Venus met when Venus was in Virgo, Venus first entered Virgo, met Jupiter opposite in Pisces. That was last week. Um, this time, it's going to be fixed. This time, Mars is going to be in Leo, Jupiter is going to be in Aquarius, and they're going to oppose. So this is different energy than when Venus and um, Jupiter met up. Um, they made things a little more special and happy, but, you know, because it's Venus and Jupiter, you know, Mars and Jupiter can make things now. now Mars is still in Leo. Mars will be at Regulus, the, the royal star of Persia, the king. And so Mars, you know, Mars likes to be king. <laughs> um, it's good to be the king, right? <laughs> so um, Mars likes to be king and it's going to be opposing Jupiter in Aquarius. So this is, this is a different energy. It isn't doing the same thing Venus did. They're in opposition, but that's all that's in common, you know, with Jupiter. It's different signs. So there could be some very grand experience of creative energy. And that could really spark and be profound. So on Thursday in the week, you know, it's going to get revved up on Wednesday. So we're, we're moving into it, you know. It's a couple of degrees. It's approaching as we speak. Mars is approaching Jupiter, but Jupiter is going to change signs. So when Jupiter really hits that Aquarius, you know, on Wednesday morning, that's going to be really the signal that Mars and Jupiter are, are opposing because now Jupiter's like really in opposite sign from Mars. So use your, use your creative genius expand your creative mind. This is a creative week. And I think that, um, and I feel that this could be some really powerful, profound leap in our creative juices, in our creativity. So how about that? What a, what a wonderful thing to enjoy. Now, Mars opposite Jupiter can be a little uppity, cocky, you know, um, I know better than you do, you know, that Jupiter will be an Aquarius. Um, but it, forget all that. Don't even, don't even buy into it. Don't listen to people who are doing that. Don't pe listen to people who are telling you're doing that, telling you you're doing that. Use this energy to be brilliant and to be, uh, unique and innovative. Um, you know, Aquarius is an innovative energy. There are things that you don't expect when things happen in Aquarius. So we go back to some relative um, surprise surprise energy. You know, when Jupiter goes back into Aquarius, there's there's like ah the surprises, the unexpected, the the excitement of the thrill of the unknown. You know, Uranus is a roller coaster, so Uranus rules Aquarius, and it's like, yeah, let's let's ride that Aquarian roller coaster, or rather, rocket ship, because that's what Aquarius is really about. And 
with Mars opposite Jupiter, Mars on Regulus opposite Jupiter, wow, that could be really amazing, amazing breakthrough, amazing energy, and amazing feel good. So celebrate it. Celebrate that Mars Jupiter, that opposition. That's going to be fabulous. And then Mars will mosey on into Virgo a few hours later, like, you know, maybe six hours later or so, um, five, six hours later. So it's like, okay, you know, uh, now back to business. <laughs> but, you know, I think that, I think we, we've got some fun happening here on Tuesday and Wednesday and, you know, part of Thursday. And so there's a, there's that fun component that we, we want to enjoy things. And I do suggest you, you do enjoy this week. Um, because it is, it is a profound shift, um, as Jupiter goes back and then Mars greets Jupiter. So this is, this is definitely a profound shift because once we get to Sunday, the first, then we've got that sun in a uh, sun opposite Saturn and Mercury opposite Saturn. So there's, there's going to be some seriousness in this, but again, we're going to, we're going to handle that. We're not going to think about that right now. We're going to get excited about Mars and Jupiter. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to have fun and you're going to be imaginative and you're going to like come up with a brilliant thing, a brilliant creative project or idea or just something like maybe you just want to go have fun with your family and your kids. Maybe you're going to do something spontaneous, which is very Aquarian. Um, hey, kids, let's like take the rest of the week off and let's go camping, you know, whatever. Something that's going to maybe be a little bit surprising, but fun, but exciting, but creative and original. And that's the nature of Aquarius is original. So I, I encourage you to use your originality and your innovative energies and have fun with them. You know, when you, when we get bonkers, you know, in our creativity, when we start to go a little off the wall with it and get silly, that's a great thing. So allow yourself to be a little silly this week in this, in this energy. Um, so in the meantime, what else is going on? The moon right now is void. It's going to go into Pisces in a couple of hours. It's going to have a beautiful conjunction with Jupiter. Um, as we're going to sleep tonight, um, and maybe, maybe, you know, we'll have some pl really pleasant dreams or expansive dreams or astral projections in our sleep. And maybe we will, um, just enjoy this Pisces moon for the next couple days as it is spiritual and it is deep and it is, um, kind of juicy with, with, Jupiter's still there. So, and then we're going to have the moon leave Pisces and go into Aries. And that's going to be more midweek because, um, yeah, the moon will enter Aries at like 6 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. So, and that's, so Wednesday's a big shifting day. You know, the moon starts the Zodiac all over again. And then, the uh, Jupiter will go into Aquarius at 8.43 a.m. Eastern Time. And, and then um, the moon will move through Aries. And it, um, it's void in Pisces on Tuesday night. So, you know, Eastern Time. So it really, like, it's not going to affect, like, the work day. Um, it's void in Aries... Friday afternoon at 3.30 and then enters Taurus like really a half an hour late, like 3.38 or so, and then enters Taurus half an hour later, 4.08 p.m. So that's actually um, only a half an hour of void, but it's Friday afternoon and no one's going to care. <laughs> and then Saturday, um, Saturday, uh, it, it will be in Taurus all day. It'll be in Taurus all day Sunday, and it won't be void again until um, the middle of the night, this region of the world, Monday the 2nd. So not a lot of void this week, and that's good. Um, that means we can get things accomplished. That means we can, you know, the things that we do will root and, and plant seeds and do things that we like. And, you know, um what else? What else is going on this week? Um, I think that is pretty much the story. 
So enjoy these last moments of Jupiter in Pisces. It used to be the ruler of Pisces prior to the discovery of Neptune. And so it does love to be in Pisces and it is in a good place in Pisces, but it is, um, it is going to leave Pisces and do its journey, go back to finish up its journey in Aquarius. And one of the things I want everyone to bear in mind is that when you go to, when we go back into Aquarius, we're going to remember that all the things we started, where we've been for a good portion of this year, and where where we've journeyed. And that's what I was talking about the other day on Instagram. It's like, where have we journeyed since that Jupiter-Saturn last December? And what has happened? And what's given us, um, you know, where is our originality ready to speak? And... Um, you know what's really important about this is that um, you dig deep inside because Jupiter is retrograde, right? So it's we step back, we go within, we take time for ourselves. But we step back and find the expansive originality in our own being. And that's what I believe this is really about in these next months and then it'll go forward and you can take that originality on the road with you um where is where is your unique voice okay where's your unique voice and find it when jupiter does this back backward motion over these next months and it it's about you know, Aquarius is always about innovation and uniqueness, as I've said 10,000 times. But it's going back there for us to find our unique place in our life, our unique voice, and to find the unique expression of this forward moving, expansive consciousness that we are all going towards. Okay? So we're going towards something big, a big shift in the dynamics of consciousness in our world. But what is your voice in that? Okay, Saturn's going to stay in Aquarius longer than Jupiter. So you have uh, plenty of time to put it to work. But Jupiter allows you to go in, close your eyes, sit with yourself and just go, okay, what is my contribution? Because Aquarians are altruistic. What is my contribution? Where can I make the biggest impact? How do I um, share my unique voice in this world for the greatest amount of impact? And that's the theme that we're going towards right now. How do I share my unique voice for the greatest amount of impact? Boom. So that's your homework. <laughs> okay, thank you for listening. This has been the Golden Astrologer Podcast. And as we wind down July, um, you can visit me on Instagram at the Golden Astrologer. You can visit me on Twitter at Deb Astrology. You can visit me. Yeah, I have Facebook. It's the Golden Astrologer. <laughs> um, and you can visit my website, thegoldenastrologer.com, and book a session. And if you would like to contribute to any of my comments on Instagram or, or um, you know, you have a question for me, just drop me a line or write me a comment or direct message me on Instagram or wherever you can. And hopefully you're going to have an expansive, beautiful week. I have a very good feeling about Mars opposite Jupiter. And may you enjoy it and love it and come to understand your um, unique voice and where its power will take you in this journey because that's what Mars and Regulus does. It's very powerful. So have a gorgeous week. Um, much gratitude to all of you for listening and for being there and for being present. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to meeting with you again. Have a beautiful week.